I'm Megan Van Petten, founder of the Esports Trade Association and host of the Esports Connected podcast. I am inspired to share key tidbits from several interviews conducted with industry influencers over the three-day span of our Esports Next conference. To be able to celebrate and learn from those who are shaping our community is such an honor. Press play and let the waterfall of knowledge wash over you as it did for me. Enjoy. All right, we are back on the Esports Connected podcast here with the woman, the myth, the legend, Miss MVP. How are you, ma'am? I am so good, Bubba. Thanks for asking. I am so glad you're here. What a night, huh? I I think you've been having a little fun, it sounds like. Oh, it's only fun to be had, right? So you are, tell me, tell me, where are we first? What hotel is this? We're at the Hyatt Centric Mag Mile in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Chicago. Now why is it, why is it the Windy City? What is the actual meaning? Oh, really? Uh Uh-huh. You want me to try to explain that? Yes, live. You know who knows everything? Mm -hmm. Who's that? Google. Yes, I say Google. Why we are called the Google? Windy City. Why it's the Windy City? Okay. That's right. All right. So I'm gonna put you in the hot seat here. You have two minutes here to tell me about the Esports Trade Association and yourself. Ready? Go. Hi, I'm Megan Van Putten, the founder and managing director of the Esports Trade Association, and it is my honor to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it was about five years ago. Um, Many, many, many people thought that going from the Fantasy Sports Trade Association to the Esports Trade Association would make sense. And um, really, I heard it from dozens and dozens of people. The esports industry could really use a trade association. Mm -hmm. And I did my research at that time, and there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. But there was more and more demand. And so um, so I threw my head over the fence. I've been climbing. Mm For about five years, exactly. So what does the Esports Trade Association do? What is your mission? What, what, what are the day-to-day things you do? Well, you know, our mission is to pro- provide resources to make our industry better, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Um, so the day-to-day is just, boy, we have, we have I think, eight committees. Um, I'll start with the EC committee. We have an education committee, which you serve on and you manage the Level Up Fund, Um, the Marketing Committee, um, the Finance Committee. Um, I don't want to say um every time. Yep. It's it's a connector word, yes, filler word. Keep going. You know, one of the committees I love is research, Mm. because who doesn't Mm. need research and data? Yeah. And our research committee is on fire. We have probably one of the best libraries of approved Mm -hmm. research um, from our our chairman, Roger Payne, from YouGov. Mm -hmm. And they curate research that they'd like, and I'll approve it through that committee. That's a a nice one. What kind of research? What's the research? Uh, Esports. I mean, like, what's the title of the topic they're working on? Um, You know, recently there's been a lot of talk about mental mental health, Mm -hmm. which has been great. Which we'll have a yeah. panel next week or yeah. tomorrow. I'm sorry, Actually, next, or, ne- this week, tomorrow, or the next day. Yeah, I'm not sure. Which and one day. of these days, one I reviewed it days. already earlier. You, if you go back that's and watch, right. go that's to been, go to the website. That's been really interesting. It's you know, it's always great to hear about and learn. You know what's positive in gaming and what's boy. You know, being like when I was growing up, gaming really, <laughs> I was never in trouble for it. I was never in trouble for doing things that were mm-hmm. recreational. Mm-hmm. You know. We were, so it, 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 it's, at least it's coming back, that yeah. um, raising awareness for rest and play is important, and yeah. it's just a wonderful thing, you know, to be part of that education. So there's, I mean, I could go on. Well, you, you, you also had, but you also had governance, maybe, or government? Oh, yeah, yeah, Gover- you could give me a question for every committee, because they're mm-hmm. all so fun. Each committee that I serve on, because uh, I'm not invited, I mean, I'm invited to all of them, I don't make it to all of them. But, you know, there's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Governance is great. Um, governance is just rules. You know, it's like what we do and mm-hmm. making sure mm-hmm. we follow them and making sure that 
you know, we're, what we, we do what we say and we say what we do. So, I, you know, governance is very important. Um, business development is so fun. Yeah. I was in a business development committee meeting yeah. today, um, you know, with a p- potential partner for the mm-hmm. Esports Trade Association. And um, that's headed up by Rick Starr. I mean, mm-hmm. I, my, my only thinking, like, during these committee meetings is I wish everyone could be in them. So, you yeah. know, that's governance, sure. too, like how we work on sure. sharing what each committee is doing mm-hmm. and cross-sharing. Mm-hmm. But I don't have a favorite. I mean, education yeah. so fun. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a hot one. So when it comes to all of us here, uh, what what this this conference, Esports Next, this fall conference, what are you hoping to accomplish this week, and what do you want us as attendees to accomplish? Boy, that's a great question. Um, it's been a long time um, in the build to get together. So first and foremost, like I'm so excited. A lot of my team, more than half, have been with me over a decade. So they've wow. seen this, they've been here, they've done this, they've got many t-shirts. But then there's some on my team that have never seen this, like Antonio, for example. He is a Fulbright intern. He's on year four with us. So he has been here from the concept to yeah. the creation. And it was really interesting that he just brought his classmate friend mm-hmm. up to our VR room and our yeah. escape room because you know he's yeah. he saw this from us literally writing mm-hmm. down a mission on a whiteboard with 30 people you know that first mm-hmm. meeting to right here mm-hmm. and so that's really rewarding um, from the inside behind the scenes from the outside um, I think the biggest feedback I got was um, the generosity and grace of people's expectation when they walked in. They mm-hmm. just didn't expect much. We're in a pandemic. Oh, wow. You know, a lot of people didn't think the show might happen. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't think we'd put what we put into it. <laughs> you know, all the little dottings of the I's and the mm-hmm. crossing of the T's. So that's been really neat to exceed expectations. I think mm-hmm. we did that. Um, I thought tonight was incredible. We mm-hmm. had uh, Dexter Carr win the quick pitch. You know, that was the wild card mm-hmm. um, for the That's elevator cool. pitch tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it was really cool. Um, one thing about Dexter Carr is that he took the elevator pitch workshop. We okay. offer, offered a course for people to make sure that they brought their best mm-hmm. to the pitch tomorrow. And he actually didn't make it into the finals. Mm. And tonight, <laughs> no. tonight he, wow. he was in the quick pitch and the audience voted. Who knows That's nothing? Incredible. They have no idea. And what I like about that, Bob, is that, um, you know, there's one thing in winning, mm-hmm. and, 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 and they say it all the time, and it's practice, 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 mm-hmm. and he sure is a story mm-hmm. about sticking with it, mm-hmm. not making it, mm-hmm. getting back on the court, getting in front of 100 yeah. people tonight, pitching again, and wow. being winning by audience applause, you know, wow. so, and he's worked, he's worked hard, and he yeah. won the wild card pitch tonight, That's so that amazing. was really rewarding to see. What a story, what a story. Now, other really great stories, I mean, I think it's amazing you've got Lewis. Oh, Lewis yeah. Lewis doing the MC. He did a good that job today. That is incredible. Whoa. Like, he's been on the Olympics or something? Yeah, he just got in from Tokyo. So he was, like, on TV, on NBC, doing yes. stuff in Tokyo? Right. And, and he's here at the Esports Trade Association. He is. He's our MC. Conference. Wow. And, you know, he kicked us off tonight. And he, he's just a class act. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, it was, um, you know, he, he's, he took every single person that pitched tonight mm-hmm. aside and coached them. No. Yes. And, and wow. you know what? He's another advocate where it's like just mm. practice, practice, practice. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so everybody mm-hmm. that pitched tonight mm-hmm. got a chance to coach with Lewis Johnson. Golly. Yeah. I That's know. amazing. Lucky. Very lucky. You couldn't get that anywhere else. You, right. you could only get that here at the eSports Next Conference. I know. So uh, when it comes to the eSports Trade Association, I heard in a, the roundtable today something about insurance. What, what is this insurance that I hear about that I think I might have to take up part of, or what, what do I need to know? Yeah, we have really nice benefits mm-hmm. that I, I'd love to talk about. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're working on programming all the time, we're working mm-hmm. on resources, we're working on membership and, and value. 
And one of them is that um, we do have some insurance um, agents mm-hmm. that we recommend. Mm-hmm. So it's very simple. You can just go to our website and click on resources and fill out a form to apply mm-hmm. for insurance. And um, one of them also is, um, like I'll, I'll just mention Johnson S. Mm-hmm. The other day, someone called me and said, Meg, I need to transfer my vent. I wasn't even thinking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yes, you yeah. do. Yeah. So that was nice. Um, you know, event insurance mm-hmm. is something That's people big. overlook. Yep, very much And so. it's so important. Mm-hmm. We have event insurance tonight, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or for this event. And does it cover COVID? No. Mm-hmm. But does it cover things that you wouldn't think? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't do an event without event right. insurance. So, um you know, we yeah. provide value there. So that's a deep cut into the East Forest Trade Association. Give me some high-level stuff that's really amazing about what the East Forest Trade Association does that you would say to the people out there watching, like, why you, esports organization, non-endemic, endemic, why should you join something like the East Forest Trade Association? What, what is it that they need to know? Boy, well, I think... One of the best things that we do is we provide community. You know, we're a member-owned, member-run organization. We're a 501c6. Um, we do an event every week, whether it's a, a webinar, a happy hour. Um, my favorite event mm-hmm. is actually the coffees. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. I don't care if one person shows or 200. Virtual it's coffees coffee. with our coffee cups. It mm-hmm. really is. Um, we don't want to overdo the virtual, but mm-hmm. boy. And then... Um, and then we're, we're really liking our clubhouse presence. That's mm-hmm. been nice. Um, so, you know, the networking. We're doing a lot more programming this coming year mm-hmm. as we're growing. Um, we're launching a mentorship program. Great. Yeah, and that is really exciting yeah. for me. Um, and why, why do people need mentorship in this industry? I mean, what, what, what are... What are the people at all ages missing that they need to know? Well, I just think, you know, just for me, I mean, I, 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 I want to give back. Mm-hmm. You know, I was given opportunities mm-hmm. and mentorships for my mm-hmm. career. And, mm-hmm. You know, you just get to a certain point where you want to give back. Mm-hmm. And we, we just want to put our professionals with, you know, our, our college, yeah. you know, college right. programs. So we're working with a, a couple of universities that are looking to pilot with their whole program. Like wow. they might put all 30 students in the Holy esports cow. program with 30 of our mentors. So that is like in the strategy phase still. Mm-hmm. I would say, I mean, I'm just guessing, but I would say by January we'll have the mentorship pilot mm-hmm. launched. Um, and that will be headed up by the Sharon Gill, our oh, strategist. Of course. Okay. Mm-hmm. We should call her professor. Yeah, something. Like she... Professor Sharon. Professor Sharon. Let's yeah. just start calling her that this week. Why don't we just call her Prof? Yeah. Prof. Professor. Prof. Come on up to the stage, Prof. Yeah. 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 Everybody, everybody would know. Well, you know, I must say, the speed networking was the best I've seen. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. It was really cool. It was really great. You know what I, I wish I would have done? I wish I would have had the bar serve drinks while people were sitting mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So all of a sudden, there was just wine and beer like in the <laughs> just, center. So nobody but you get ta- up because But you so take your intense. drink with you? You can drink someone else's drink? Yeah, keep your drink. <laughs> keep your drink and move on. But, you know, I felt bad stopping it. You know? Oh, yeah. That's always the worst part about oh, speed dating, man. for and sure. Because it, it was like, it was happening. There was, I mean, 60 people. No, yeah, at least. More than that. Probably more like Yeah, five. it was amazing. The, the hotel kept saying, more chairs and more chairs. <laughs> yeah, you, more chairs. I, Danny Martin was on the end. Yeah. Uh, like, there's no more table room. Right. It was amazing. So when I think about uh, members, uh, people becoming members, and when I think about those out there in the industry who are non-demic that want to get involved with the Esports Trade Association, what what do you tell people, um, big organizations that aren't esports related, that why why they should get involved with the esports industry, and why coming through the trade association is probably one of the best venues for that? What 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 do you tell these big organizations? I don't know whether let's just say Walmart. What would you tell Walmart? Why would they need to be a part of the trade association to be involved. Well, I mean, for the for the esports, hi guys, <laughs> hi, we got some waivers. <laughs> you know, it it depends on. First off, I don't think everyone should join. Mm. So mm. I would want to know why they want to mm. join. 
Yeah. You know, that's one of the, the things that's hard to scale, you know, mm. and, and that's that's one of the things in managing our growth, too, because I have a conversation with everybody, mm-hmm. and we're going to have to turn um, it over to our membership committee mm-hmm. um, to help through that question, because it's yeah. a good one. Because you know what I ask everybody that comes to us, because we, we don't go to them. We're managing inbound. I ask them, you know, why they're doing it? And is, is, is it a fit? And is it part, why is it part of their strategy? You know, and for each and every person, it's in, in, it, it, sometimes it makes sense for people not to join. You know? So I, my first question would be, Walmart, what are you looking for? Okay. And okay. is it a fit? Okay. So, uh, you also have a really cool presentation this week about a check being presented to some nonprofit. Is that right? With yes. what? With the Level Up Fund, which yes. is going to be. I don't know where we are. I can't see the thermometer over there. We're trying to raise money for. Is it a local charity? I'm guessing or a charity? Yes. Uh-huh, great. The Bronzeville, our first team in Chicago. The Bronzeville. Yeah, the Bronzeville. That's right. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, we ha- we should really talk about just how like a conversation can turn into something. <laughs> I mean, can we just tell that story? Of course. Okay. You go first. There was a need to support esports, uh, the industry in esports, when it comes to those in need who are students or nonprofits or charities that are helping the community, whether it be. Um, disenfranchised students or peoples or families out there in the industry or out there in the community, but especially here during this event in Chicago, why not have a fundraiser during the event to support a local charity? But really the Level Up Fund is this umbrella really under the Esports Trade Association to help recognize those charities and those nonprofits to give them the ability to Maybe get some funding from people who are in the industry and learn about them, not just as much to learn about each other. And it is just the beginning, Mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's all about what you can do. I mean, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. I'm not the first one to say this, and Mm -hmm. I won't be the last, Mm -hmm. but um, it'll be really, really nice to work on developing the fund Mm -hmm. and and fostering that. Mm -hmm. Um, We're we're really happy to help Chicago. it's very, it's very exciting to present it to April Welch, who's like, mm-hmm. this <laughs> amount of money, and like, you, you, know, yeah. you feel like your hands touching yeah. the product. Uh-huh. You know, she, we're literally putting computers yeah, in the classroom. Right. Literally, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there are kids that can't. First off, they don't have the technology at home. Mm-hmm. Second off, all, they don't have it when they go to school. Yeah, I mean, that's just like, you know. And she serves a community here in Chicago, in a Southside? Very, a very underserved mm-hmm. community in Brownsville. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, um, we're really going to make an impact. And we're able yeah. to do that here today. Let it be a start for a start. even more. Yeah. Okay, well, Megan, where can people go to learn more about the Esports Trade Association, about this conference? How can they become a sponsor next year? Or a sponsor right now to be involved in this amazing organization. Where can they go? Esports Trade Association. You can Google it or go to esportsta.org. Um, so, lastly, to close, give me a um, funny story from tonight. Maybe something you noticed tonight that besides besides him winning that stuff, but. I, I guess really what I'm looking for is out of this experience this whole week, this craziness that you've been managing. This whole entire conference, what is something you look back and say, that was crazy that happened, or I'm glad it happened, or what? All right, how long do I have? Mm, minute. Can I have two minutes? Okay, you can have two I minutes. I have the funniest story. Uh-huh. So LG sponsored our mm-hmm. equipment, uh-huh. and there's Chloe, the robot, right now. Oh, yeah. And um, all of a sudden, the largest screen we have in our ballroom could not get into the dock oh. on Saturday. Okay. So the first off, the they delivered it early. 
mm-hmm. so the LG team couldn't get here. Okay. And I saw the work order. The mm-hmm. delivery company did not follow LG's instruction. <laughs> so our dear Chloe was put in the alley out of that. But I was called. And I lived two blocks away. Oh, okay. So I make it over here. Uh-huh. And as I'm loading that robot into the dock myself, and with a few other generous souls uh-huh. that happen to be here, uh-huh. the big screen doesn't fit in the dock. Oh my. So um, we had to call LG, because mm. we were like, we got it, no problem, we'll just load this in. No, no problem at all. So we call LG, and they're like, all right, if we can't get in the dock, we'll send the truck. And I was like, that is my screen. <laughs> I, I am not going to watch that get loaded. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, and take it away. So right. our dear Kevin Fair, I looked at him and I was like, Kevin, uh-huh. we're rolling this through the front door of the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so we roll uh-huh. this into the front door of the hotel and I happen to know the bellman down uh-huh, there, Charles. Uh-huh. And I'm like, hey Charles, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Just moving along here. Just moving along here. <laughs> yeah. And there we got it. It fit uh-huh. in the front door elevator. Oh. And they were sending a truck back like, you know, we couldn't get that screen in. No way. This is an old hotel. Yeah. It wasn't going to fit. And there you have it. We rolled wow. in our stage screen <laughs> through the front door. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Well, that is a story to live by. I and that's a good Chloe, right? Chloe's the robot. And look, there's Chloe. She's about to come into frame here. Here she is. She's coming. I think it's pretty fun. Frame. Yeah, Chloe's been sweet. She's been delivering me. Oh, she's out of drinks. There she goes. Bye, Chloe. <laughs> she goes. She's going to get. She's going to the bar to get a refill. <laughs> I bet so. Well, awesome. MVP, Thanks, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited about the rest of your days. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.